When Google Analytics 4 was launched, it was missing one very important metric that many of us were using, conversion rate. Without it, it was more difficult to quickly see which traffic sources and marketing campaigns perform better. But it's finally back, and in this video I will show you how to use it. Oh, and there's one important change compared to the previous version of Google Analytics. Let's take a look. In a nutshell, conversion rate basically shows you how well is your business or your website or your application, how well it is converting visitors into leads or buyers or something else. Basically, it is a percentage of sessions or users that had a conversion. And a conversion in this context means some important action, such as purchase or when someone subscribes to your newsletter or something else. Let's take a look where can we see the conversion rate in Google Analytics 4. Unfortunately, when I'm recording this video, standard reports in the reports section still do not support conversion rate as a metric. You cannot add it there or you cannot see it there by default. But I hope that Google will fix this in the future. However, you can find conversion rate in explorations. So click on explore on the left sidebar, then you can create a new report or click free form. And then let's build a report of traffic sources because we want to know which traffic sources drive the highest conversion rate and the most conversions. To do that, you should go to dimensions, click plus, and then keep looking for the session source medium because that's usually the dimension that most people are using. You can also keep looking for something else such as session default channel grouping. This one is also popular, but based on the use of Universal Analytics, which is the older version, I've noticed that I and many other people are usually using session source medium. So click that one, click import, just make sure that the dimension in this case starts with the word session. Don't use the regular source slash medium dimension because that works in a bit different way and you won't get the results that you want. And then let's add some metrics. So click plus in the metrics section and then let's see how many sessions did we get from each traffic source. So select the metric sessions, then you can use the number of users. There are two metrics for that, active users and total users. But what I've noticed again, that many people are still using the total users because this number includes both active users, but also less active. So you can add that, then you might want to add the number of conversions. This is not the conversion rate, this is the total number of conversions. And here we see the session conversion rate. So click that. You might also be wondering what is the user conversion rate, but I will explain that later in this video. So please be patient. And now click import. Now we have to add these dimensions to this report. So you can either drag it like that and make sure that the dimension is added to the rows, or you can just double click these items and then they will be automatically added to the report. So double click here, 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 and here. And now you see the report where we have source medium, which are basically different traffic sources. And then we have the number of sessions, how many users generated those sessions, then the number of conversions, and then the session conversion rate. In this official Google Analytics for demo property, Google has marked way too many events as conversions. That is why we have such a high numbers right here. So in this context, we're focusing on sessions and session conversion rate here is calculated like this. We take a number of sessions that had at least one conversion, then we divide that by all sessions, and then we multiply that by 100%. And that way we get the session conversion rate. Or in other words, this percentage right here shows that 66% of sessions that come from direct non source medium, they end up with at least one conversion per session. When you look at these numbers, keep in mind that if you try to divide the conversions number by this number, that number here will not match the result because there might be several conversions in the same session. And this number shows all conversions, even if five conversions happened in the same session, those five conversions will be included here. But this is looking at sessions that have at least one conversion. So if one session has five conversions, we are still looking at that one session, regardless of number of conversions. Let me explain this in a bit different way. Let's say that we have one user that came to our website from Google organic search. And then let's say the next day that visitor came to our website from our email newsletter. And then during that session, the user converted. 
So in this case, we have two sessions, one conversion, and session conversion rate for this particular user is 50%, because we divided one by two. Then we had a second user, and this one came from a paid advertising campaign and converted in that session. And we also had another session where the visitor came from some other site and also converted. In this case, we have two sessions, two conversions, or actually two sessions with conversions, and then conversion rate is 100%. If, for example, in the first session, the visitor converted five times, that would still be counted as one in this particular row right here. Because when session or conversion rate is calculated, it does not matter how many conversions happened in the same session. What matters is just the fact that conversion happened. And then when we calculate the total session conversion rate, we have four sessions, three sessions with conversions, and the session conversion rate is 75%. So when you're working with session conversion rate and you want to take a look at traffic sources, in this case, I would recommend using dimensions that start with the session word right here. Remember, don't use a dimension, for example, that is called just source medium or just campaign. Instead, use session source medium, session default channel grouping, session source, and so on. But let me show you one problem when it comes to calculation of session conversion rate. Let's say that I'm running a website where the main goal of the site is to get the contact information from the visitor. Basically, I want that visitor to submit a contact form. And in this case, let's say that the visitor lands on my website, converts in the same session, and that's it. Job is done. I have completed what I wanted. The visitor has submitted the contact form. But then, let's say after a week or so, the visitor comes back to your website from a different traffic source. This means a new session. That is why in total you have two sessions, one session with conversions, and session conversion rate is 50%. But it's actually lower than I would like it to be because basically for this visitor, my goal is complete. That visitor has converted. And the more this visitor will come back to your site, the lower your session conversion rate will be. That is where user conversion rate is also very useful because this metric will be looking at users, not sessions. For example, I have a visitor that comes from Google Organic on my website. Then after a while, that visitor returns from a different traffic source or maybe even from the same traffic source, but the session is different. Then the second user also comes to the website, converts, then on the next session also converts. In this case, I have two users, two conversions, but in this case, it doesn't matter because the number of converted users is one. One user, which is the user right here, that user has converted at least once in any session. That is why user conversion rate is 50%. If we go back to the previous example, we had one user, that converted in the first session, and then we had another session from the same user. We have one session with conversion, but user conversion rate is one, because in this case, we have one user and one user who converted. So divide one by one, and you will get 100% conversion rate, because the conversion rate formula is calculated like this. We take users with conversions and then divide them by total users, and then we multiply that by 100%. And you can include that metric by going to your exploration and then clicking plus next to metrics. Then enter user conversion rate and you will find this metric. Click the checkbox, click import, and then double click on that metric. If you want, you can rearrange your metrics by dragging and dropping them. And then if you want to see that metric, because in my screen that does not fit in, so I can either zoom out or I can hide these sidebars by clicking here. And you will see that your user conversion rate is higher than your session conversion rate because this metric is looking at a user. And if the user had five sessions and converted at least once, that will be counted as one converted user. And those sessions without conversions will not lower it down. And that is how you should use conversion rate in Google Analytics 4. Remember, there are now two different types session conversion rate and user conversion rate. So keep in mind their differences before you use them. If you found this video useful, hit the thumbs up button below the video. That will help me understand what videos you like and what should I create in the future. Also, if you want to learn more about Google Tag Manager or Google Analytics 4, then consider subscribing to this channel. My name is Julius, this is Analytics Mania, and I'll see you in the next video.